Hey guys, so I thought since it's Christmas Eve, we'll do a very special roundup of different stories that are from different parts of my notepad um, that don't really fit anywhere else. You know, these, these are stories that are just a bit odd, a bit strange uh, from time working at, at Games Workshop and also working at different hobby stores. Um, <clears throat> you know, retail has been a big part of my life when I was a bit younger, between working in pubs. I would work in hobby stores. I would work in mostly uh, trade account hobby stores, actually. So it wouldn't always be GW stores. And then, uh, obviously, for a couple of years, I was working for GW full-time as a as a um, salesperson, sales representative, or sales assistant, as they call it, in-store sales, sales assistant, and a manager, eventually, as a manager. So I have my notepad out in front of me, and I'm going to reel off some really cool stories that we're going to be going over in this video so the first one the main thing is is how minorities are treated at games workshop in general right so that's going to be the main focus of the video we're going to be going over uh, different times that i i've had in the hobby store and the games workshop i will label them as we go along so you're not going to get confused um and how minorities and um, um, homosexuals you know transgender uh, black asian whatever are treated in games workshop stores from what I've seen. Um, <clears throat> the other one is uh, stupid questions. I got asked the other day, so stupid questions that I've been asked at Games Workshop. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna disqualify mums from this uh, because, you know, they're clueless most of the time. So that, that would be, you know, not a good thing to do. And the other time is, the other one is um, a story about my safe not working at GW. So the safe that holds all of my money. Um, uh, when that stopped working at GW, it was a bit bit of a fun time. But anyway, first things first, how minorities treated? So I think it's a question that's quite pertinent to the modern world and how things are, are going these days um, with, with how we're treating customers and how we're treating the hobby going forwards. Now, I have two parts of this story. There's one where I was working uh, in my, near where I live now uh, at a hobby store. And this was not a Games Workshop store. This was this was a general hobby store um, in my early twenties, just working there. And I have to say, um, in terms of minorities, I will say this: the amount of times that people would come in who were, let's say, of a transgender persuasion, right? The look of confusion. A lot of geeks do not have a filter, okay? Uh, especially if they're, they're quite self-confident geeks. They just don't have a filter. Um, you know, so we, we would get things like somebody would come in and they would be looking like, uh, you know, you know they're, they're like a man, like clearly dressed as a lady or vice versa. And you get things like, whoa, that's an out there look. Or you'd get, you know, or you get blatant staring and things like that. You, you'd get that all the time. You'd get absolutely blatant staring. Um... That was something that was completely normal in the hobby store. You know, that would happen all the time. We would have four or five people who, you know, as a hobbyist, as a hobby store, you will attract more eclectic people of human society. You just will. Um, which is why we have such a, um, <clears throat> shall we say, a problem with policing certain individuals who like to take advantage of kids in stores sometimes, right? You know, you know, that that's something that needs watching because you're going to attract these 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 the, the fringes of society. You're going to attract nerds, and not every part of every subculture is well-meaning. And in a hobby store, generally, that doesn't have a big corporation behind it. It's really really difficult because if you're a, a small mar and pop hobby store, which you know my, my first my first experiences working in the hobby was that. Um, you are going to find it so much more difficult to police behaviour than uh, than an actual corporate entity would. So we would get often very homophobic remarks. We would get quite racist remarks. We would get, you know, and <clears throat> at the same time, you have to remember as well, if you're a small mom and pop hobby store and you make a call that this isn't what I want in the store, you can't point to a conglomerate behind you and say this is the company policy go fuck yourself you can't do that it's your policy so whatever you say it's your opinion and it's and you're basically laying yourself bare for your customer saying look i don't i don't appreciate this i don't like this in other words you have to be very brave to have your own space like that and to open it up and to be like look this is what i think this is how i think 
and this is what I want, and I don't want this, and I do want this. This is the kind of place I'm trying to create. And you will turn people off. And we did turn people off. It, it, you know, people stopped coming to the store because we would say, no, that's not appropriate, or or you're, you're wearing stuff that's, that's, that's not appropriate. We would have people coming in, you know, with, there was one person who came in with a, with a My Little Pony hentai t-shirt on. No, go away. Like, just literally go away. No, I have kids in here. You're not allowed to come in here with that on. You know, something so fucking ridiculous, right? Take your take your T-shirt, take your warped sense of reality, and fuck off, basically, right? I mean, we do that all the time in the hobby store. One thing that really did mean I, it really did reinforce my faith in the hobby though, was working at Games Workshop. I know, shock horror. But it wasn't really the company that did this. It was the people who came into my store. I had the most wonderful, caring, um, supportive group of people buying things in my stores, my regulars. When I was, there was one thing I was really grateful for when I was at the company. I couldn't have asked for better customers. Even people who came in off the street, all very well mannered, very well knowledgeable. Yeah, even if they weren't, they wanted to learn. They wanted to see how cool the hobby was. And I very rarely had a problem. I very, very rarely had a problem with with anybody at the store. We would always get people being. We we, we did have um, <clears throat> a lady who was obviously bisexual. But by that I mean, um, I took her for a coffee once, right? Not like that. Just literally, she would look like she was having a bad day, so I took her for a coffee. Now, I took her up the road for a coffee for this ni this nice coffee store, and the woman who owned the coffee store was like so. She was lovely, but she she thought it was a date, so she'd come going, going, "Hey guys, how's it going? You're right." I'm like, "Listen, can you just leave us be for a minute?" Like, you know, it was just so awkward because it wasn't a date, obviously, because I, I can't do that. You're right. I mean, I can, but I don't want it. <clears throat> so, you know, she's she's a uh, very pretty lady, uh, but she's obviously. Um, wears um, masculine clothes, you know, and, and so she was coming out of a shell. She was on, on the brink of, of coming out, basically. She was she was ready to say, like, I'm, I'm proper bisexual. I find women really hot. Um, I also like men, but, like, I, I you know, I, I'm, she's been repressing this for a long, long time because she's from a good Catholic background, and you don't do things like that, right? You, 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 don't, you don't generally say or do things like that. But being in the store... And she's been at uni now for a little while. Being at the store, being at uni, she's now coming out of a shell. And that person was basically adopted by everybody at the store. She was always playing um, battles. She was always playing games. Um, she was always having a laugh. She was always smiling, always joking. And I thought to myself, the one thing that Games Workshop needs to embrace is the fact that we have spaces like this. Where I couldn't do this. In, in, I've worked in two uh, hobby stores that aren't Games Workshop. I couldn't, I couldn't have this person in either one of those two stores. I would love to, but I mean, when I say have this person, I would have them there, but they, they wouldn't stay there for for long. They would be like, no, I'm, I'm done here, right? You know, I'm getting stared at. I'm getting inappropriate uh, comments. I don't need to deal with this. See you later, right? Games Workshop, because I had that corporate weight behind me to say, you, you can go fuck yourself. You can go fuck yourself. Get out. And I very rarely did so. Um, not as much as all the other managers have in the past, trust me. Like, like my, my, my customers were amazing, for the most part. But because I had that corporate weight behind me to say, listen, this is the policy. If you don't like it, shove off, essentially, right? One second, I'm going to take a sip of my tea, and I will mute myself. There we go. So, yeah, um, it's probably the one instance where corporate weight actually is a good thing. When you can see things that shouldn't be happening in a hobby store that uh, that are currently happening in yours, you can literally come down on like a ton of bricks and say, "Listen, you know, um, this isn't the place. This isn't the place for that." I, I've mentioned this before in a video about politics, right? Right. This isn't the place to wear your Che Guevara T-shirt. This isn't the place to wear your you know your Mein Kampf T-shirt. You know, both of you go fuck yourselves. In fact, I'll set up a little ring outside for you. We'll have a ladder match, and whoever wins get, gets a contract to get back into the store. How about that? And now it's lock the lock the door, leave them out there. You know, I just just nice, empty, empty of all those kinds of thoughts, right? And it's the same thing going for people like this young lady who who would come into the store and would you know feel reaffirmed, they were accepted, and that's geeked them in itself. You know, geeked them in itself is like, oh, we don't give a shit who you are. Just come in and, and paint some models. Shut up. You know, just stop being so weird. Just come in, and paint some models, right? 
you're you're in the land of freaks and weirdos, right? So you know, and I think there is a very a very big problem in geekdom with reverse bullying, whereas a lot of these people, especially my age, who went through school, I was quite lucky in school because I, I was quite I was quite wasn't popular, but you know the popular kids tended to like me. I don't know why, um, but you know I, I would see other nerds would go through the ringer, right? They would get picked on. And then when they get older and they have their own space and all of a sudden other people want to join who are kind of normal, they'll turn it around on them and say, well, you know, ooh, what a, what a normal person, you know, not one of us sort of a thing. And it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. And it's, it's the same goes for everybody else, right? A, a hobby store should be a place where you can come in and say whatever you want, whenever you want. And one thing I can say for Games Workshop, I know people will be railing against me being positive right and we'll be annoyed that i'm being positive about games workshop but in general if you are someone of a minority it doesn't matter whether you're you're black or whatever or or, or, or whatever you are if, you, if you're go you go into games workshop you're guaranteed a warm welcome you're guaranteed a baseline hey you're not different you know and even by the customers by the way not just the staff even the customers will be hey you're not different sit down Here's a model, paint some models, right? Um, going into my, my my experience with hobby stores now, I'm going to go on to uh, to a, a girlfriend experience now. Um, oh, the, having a cup. I, I should never make a cup of tea. It's right in front of me, and it's it's Yorkshire, and it's been really well brewed. One second. So my channel is now. It's tea porn. Um, so I had a girlfriend at the time. Uh, when I was working as manager at Games Workshop, and she was a very attractive, um, half Filipino, half Irish girl with you know dark gingery hair, very curvy body, looked like an anime waifu, but like with 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 um, curvy proportions, right? So, so she was she wasn't she was slim, but you know hourglass, cracking rack, you know, and she wouldn't mind me saying this as well. She'd be fucking overjoyed, right? Beautiful looking girl. And she came into um, my store, and the one thing I will say, this happens in every single store, by the way, it doesn't matter what it is, is that she would come into Games Workshop and a hush would go down the store. It's like a, quite a, you know, malaise. We'll go through the store. And I thought, hmm, that's awkward. And then I looked to my bisexual friend who I'd taken for a coffee. And I thought, well, at least she will get on with her game, you know, because it's a woman. And then I realised, of all the people in the store looking at, at my girlfriend, that was probably the main one. She was like, my God, you know, just, you know. I was like, Jesus Christ, okay. Um, so I sat her down at the intro table, gave her a coffee, said, right, you know, we're going to leave in a little bit, you know, and I'm going to close up in a little while. And we'll go and grab a drink. And so... We walked out and she said, oh, that, that was like a mild reaction. I said, what do you mean? I said, well, normally when I walk into a place like that, the whole place just goes quiet and I get you know, a bunch of weirdos coming up to me and you know, asking me if they want to you know, wanna, wanna play some games with them. And I went, oh, well, that's not too bad, is it? She goes, no, but it is too bad in the way that they do it, yes. I mean, they normally do it looking down my top and like, look, you know, I'm, like I'm, a, I'm a morsel who just walked in. I was like, oh, yeah, fair enough, you know. Anyway, a few weeks later, we went to a hobby store just down the road from where from where my store was. This was a trade account. And she just got into Magic the Gathering. Um, I've never been into it. I think it's a... I know it's, it's going to be really rich coming from a 40k player, but I think it's a fucking rip. I think it's an absolute scam. Um, but, like, yeah, a lot, you know, she, she got into it, and so we walked in, and I swear to God, the first thing we saw... Two things hit us when we walked into this hobby store. One was the B.O. stench. Two... There was a really fat bloke leaning over a table with his pants halfway around his ass, right? She very nearly walked out there and then. But we persevered, we walked in, uh, the whole place went quiet, everyone's looking at her, everybody's eyeing her up, everybody's looking up and down, going, look, you know, who is this, you know? People have stopped because they just don't know what to do when the woman's entered the premises. They don't know what to do when the woman is in their sphere. They just, they just, they just break down, they don't know what to do. And by the way, this isn't just nerds, Every, all men do this. The thing is, is that men, straight men who aren't nerds, are very good at masking that they're doing this. They'll carry on their conversation, but they'll be like, yeah, 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 and, and they'll puff their chests out and sort of like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, we talk about, you know, how manly we are, right? 
Every man does it, right? Even if you even if you don't think you do, yes you do. I'm telling you now. If, if I went to a pub with you and a fit woman walked in, you'd do exactly the same thing, and I'd be looking at you and I'd be like, yeah, you're doing it, right? So nerds don't do that. Nerds go into their shells and start mumbling and then looking over and looking up and down, and and they don't know how to be not. In general, they don't know how to to not make it obvious. So yeah, needless to say, we bought. Well, she bought one pack, left, and she was, like, not shaken or anything like that, but she was a bit like, fuck me, I don't want to go back in there again. Because she was, she was quite boyish, you know, in the way that she approached things. She was like, I don't want to go back in there again. That was, that was fucking horrible. You know, she, and she was used to it. She was completely used to it. She she worked in London. You know, she, people come on to her all the time. She was completely used to it. But she didn't like that. It weirded her out, right? The repressed energy in there really freaked her out. And so from then on in... We ordered it all online. We, we didn't go into any stores or anything like that. And of course, I didn't sell much of the gathering, so I couldn't sort her out. So, that is the one, quote-unquote, it's not a minority, but the one minority in the hobby. Women are a minority in the hobby. Not in real life, but in the hobby they are. That is the one minority that are genuinely treated differently in Games Workshop stores. Everybody else, doesn't matter what kind of a, quote-unquote, weirdo you are, because we're all a bit weird in, in, in one shape or form. It doesn't matter. Apart from the one, obviously, which we've been with, been to with Dave in our previous in one of our previous videos. Everybody else is welcome, right? You can come in and you know whatever. It's fine, you know, as long as you don't ruin the experience for everyone else. All good. But women, especially good-looking women, genuinely, I would say, it's very it's a very rare games workshop store where they can actually stay and be not feeling uncomfortable. You know. Um, and I've literally had the argument thrown at me before from customers saying, well, this is our space. So, you know, if they're coming into our space, then yeah, we're going to look at them. I'm like, well, I, I sympathize with that point. I really do. Because as, as a nerd, you do have your, I don't want to use the word safe space, but it's kind of like that. You have your own little area and you don't want people coming in and, and infecting it. And if they do come in, then they've got to abide by your rules. And, and I get what you're meaning there. But, um, forced inclusivity is bullshit, normal inclusivity isn't, right? If a woman is extremely hot, say if Christina Scabia from Lacuna Coil is walking down the road and she wants to come into a games workshop and she walks in, you know, she should be able to just come in, buy, buy a few models, get an intro game and then fuck off, basically, right? She shouldn't. They should come in, get the shit stared out of her and would think, uh, maybe this isn't for me and she'd walk out, right? seen it happen before many times many times right the amount of people that i know trying to get girlfriends involved in the hobby who've been instantly turned off by the reception that they get right or you know i i, I had one one friend of mine who got into the hobby and she she is quite hot and she wouldn't mind me saying that either um in fact she would probably doff her cap to honest with you but you know, she got into warhammer age of sigma and she started actually in the store that i ran and she kept winning games and she didn't know why she was like i'm because she's learning the rules and she's like like this ogre this ogre army should be absolutely smashing me what the hell is going on she figured out lo and behold they're letting her win right for brownie points <laughs> for brownie points right they're, they're trying to get you know it in there by letting her win and, and making her have a good time and making her laugh which you know some part of me applauds the genius of it but the other part of me is like, fucking hell, dude. You would probably get more out of a woman by beating the shit out of her in the hobby terms, right? On the tabletop and just taking the piss, right? Literally going for it and just like having a good time and treating her like any, any, any bloke mate, right? You just have a, have a laugh and just like get on with her and just, you know, and try and knock her off the table, right? But it wouldn't work like that. It would always be this awkward standoff. And it just drives people away. So, that, that, so that's my 20 minute pseudo rant on minorities and hobby stores. And what I've experienced over the years. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about. What was the other thing I wanted to talk about? <clears throat> oh yeah, stupid questions. Right. So, beyond the beyond the obvious. Well, to be fair. My, my store uh, stayed Games Workshop, right? And every other store around me was Warhammer, was changing to be Warhammer. Um, but mine, mine was due to do that, but it was going to be in like, in like six months. 
So you, I would literally have people coming in saying, do you sell Warhammer, right? And th these are not people who are, say, clueless in, in the nicest possible way. These aren't parents who don't know what the hell. No, these are hobbyists who come in and I'm like, well, uh, you know, normally, I, would, I will say this now, they were American, normally, who would come in, you know, they, 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 know the, they know the brand Warhammer, right? They would come in, hey, do you guys sell Warhammer? Yes. I know, you know, and... I, I just, I, I never got over how many times I would field that question from tourists. Yes, I do. Um, that's why it says Warhammer in the window. You know, that's why all those Warhammer models and boxes are in the window as well. Because I sell Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. Um, can I borrow a tenner? That was one thing that did come up. And it came up quite a lot. I'd have people saying, listen, mate, um, not get any money for lunch. Do you mind if I borrow a tenner? Yes, I do mind if you borrow a tenner. It's, it, you know, you're not getting it from me and you're not getting it from the fucking till either. Right? Just all the time. Because they knew you had cash on site. Could I borrow this? Could I borrow that? No. No, you can't. Right? No, you can't. On, on the subject of borrowing, can I borrow this codex? I don't have a codex. I'm going to tournament this weekend. Can I borrow this codex? Dude, if you can afford the, the fees and the travel to go to a tournament, you can afford to buy a fucking codex. No. No, you can't borrow the codex, right? You know. You know. I went home the other day and I found out I had a box of skeletons in my bag. Anyway, I built them and painted them. I brought them back though for you. So it doesn't count as stealing. Can I come back in the store? No. No. No, you can't, right? This, these are the types of stupid questions you field as a Games Workshop employee. You don't really get questions that are, are so out there that you just like, this person has no brain. But you do get a lot of entitled questions. Um, there was one person saying, uh, can I spray paint just outside the store? And I'd say, no, right? Because they were trying to spray paint on the floor. What are you doing? That's not my property, right? Like, I've the... The, this is the this is the council property. These flagstones do not spray on them. For fuck's sake, what are you doing? In front of my place of business. Stop it, right? You get that all the time. You get these really weird behaviours and questions from people who should know better. Um, but in terms of stupid questions, those kinds of ones I would get. I would get really entitled questions. People who would expect you. Uh, can you mind? Uh, I get things like, can you mind my kids kids for like a couple of hours? Well, no, I can't. No, I can't mind your fucking kids. Like the balls of these people. Some of them would drop off their kids like it was daycare and would just leave. But at least then they don't have the temerity to ask you. It's like, dude, no, I fucking can't. I'm running a store. This isn't a daycare center. These, you know, go away. You know, like, no, no, no. If your kid wants to be involved in the hobby, fine. But they're not my responsibility whilst they're here. They're your responsibility. You're a parent. You're a parent. So you take that responsibility, right? I'd get entitled questions. I wouldn't really get silly questions, but I would get entitled ones, is the answer to that question. Very entitled questions sometimes. Um, so, quick story about my safe breaking. So, so every retail business in the world pretty much has a safe uh, in which you keep, you know, petty cash, things like that. Um, mine wouldn't open one evening. Um, I, I actually had a very big cash day. And, and these days, like, not a lot of cash is kept in these things, like, at all. Because most of uh, most of your retail business comes electronically, um, but this day for some reason it was it was near Christmas and I had a ton of cash. So I was like, okay, this is like over oh, ne nearly fifteen hundred pound in cash, a lot of money. So I walked over there, tried to open it, wouldn't open. I thought, okay, I I've just put the combination in wrong. Doesn't open again, and okay, and again, and again, and again, and it's that point. At work, do you know when you just don't want to call somebody? You don't want to call them and say, look, uh, my safe isn't working. Uh, you know, and be that guy, right? You don't want to be that guy. And I'm, I'm singing, I'm fuming for myself. Get this fucking code right. And I, I slowed it down to the point where I knew I'd got it right and it still wouldn't open. There's nothing worse than that, that latch not opening. And you sit there with £1,500 worth of stuff. Like, what the fuck am I going to do? So I called up head office in the end, defeated, and I said, look, my my safe will not, will not open. I have a lot of money here. What do I do with it? Right? And of course, head office, banded back and forth. 
send me send me to a few different people and in, in, in the end we get to resources which are the guys who will you know help you out if your window breaks or something like that and they say right well someone will be around in the morning to look at the safe uh, but in terms of the money you're gonna have to take it home with you right I just put it in a bag you know and do it like you you know you're gonna have to take it home with you so cue me having a very very toe curling train ride home uh, where I, I covered up my Games Workshop t-shirt and I covered up everything Games Workshop about me and I got on the train and I, was, and I and I held my bag in my hand, my rucksack in my hand. I didn't have it on my back, I had it in my hand. And I did that all the way home until finally we got home and I, I put the bag in my room and left it there and then the next day, guy didn't turn up till about three o'clock in the afternoon and he basically replaced the entire safe. He just he just took it away and gave me a new one. Gave me the... Gave me the uh, the uh, the combination for it, opened it, put the money in there, everything's hunky dory. But I swear to God, you must have had these times in a retail business, whatever business, where you, all the people are relying on you and something just won't work. It just won't work. So you're sitting there, not wanting to be that guy, and that was me. That was me. I didn't want to have to rely on people for help. Um, but the, these these things happen. But that was my very 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 awkward train ride home one evening uh, from from a games workshop where, where my safe wouldn't work. Um, load of vouchers in there as well that, that, that just went. That, that was one thing that was really funny where, where the, the the guys who did the locks, did the locksmithing and all that, they took away the safe. And there was like loads of vouchers in there, like like thousands of pounds worth of vouchers. Obviously useless without a stamp, but it's still quite funny that they just took away all these thousands of pounds worth of games workshop vouchers. <laughs> um, but anyway... Thank you. Oh, by the way, before anyone says, oh, you can't say that because it's just in the safe. Um, no, those vouchers are worthless if, unless they're scanned through the till. You scan them through the till as you sell them. But apart from that, they're worthless. Okay, there's pieces of paper. So, um, thank you very, very, very much for watching. I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I did a nice longer video for you today about how things work in the hobby and how things work in hobby stores. Uh, we will be carrying on with our Warhammer Old World videos probably today or Boxing Day. We'll see. Uh, but have a very, very good Christmas, and I'll speak to you next time. Have a good one.